So without further ado, let's get on to some actual testing. So I'm just going to turn the switch towards me so it's easy to operate. You've got your piece of tissue there. Turn it on and immediately you can see that being blown away from it. You can't even, it's actually quite difficult to keep it in the breeze. And I can really feel that breeze on my hand. Hi guys, Jamie at Three Amateurs here back with a science and engineering video that I've actually been promising you guys for a little while. Um, now, some of you may remember way back last year, I made an ion drive or an ion thruster, um, or at least I attempted to, and I stuck it on the channel just to see what people thought of it. And it's actually been one of my most popular videos and definitely one of the videos I've got the most engagement from. And I've really enjoyed talking to you guys about the project. And I know I keep promising that I'm gonna try and make a better version. Well, that's what I've done here. The circuitry is actually very similar, it's just the design of the anode and the cathode that I have changed. I've actually built what I wanted to build here, and that is something that allows me to optimise the design by changing different parameters. One thing I did say in that first video was that I wanted to crank up the voltage on one of these high voltage driver modules and see what happened. Um, I did do that, I stuck 9 volts through it consistently and I burnt it out. So what I have done here is I have stuck to a 6 volt maximum using these four AA batteries. Um, and that is just the maximum that these are raced to and even then they're not meant to be left charged at that voltage for that long. So what have we done here then? Well, I'll talk you through the circuitry very briefly. So in terms of the circuitry here, really super simple, at least the circuitry that I've put together. So we've got these one, two, three, four cells. Uh, these are our AA cells, a switch, and that then goes to our transformer setup. Um, I know this is technically incorrect, but I'm just going to draw it as a transformer for the sake of simplicity. So that's going to have our fuel coils on this side. And then you've got your high voltage side. Sorry, not the easiest thing to draw in felt at pen permanent marker rather. Okay, then on this side, so obviously this isn't actually what's going on, this is a vast oversimplification. What's actually happening is it's being turned into AC, going through the transformer and then going through a bunch of diodes to get it back to a pulsed DC signal. What we then have is our anode, so this is our needle in the uh, crocodile clip, although you could use kind of a nail or anything else in there really, this is the beauty of this design allowing me to vary it. So that's our anode, our positive electrode, and then over at our negative one, we've got our hose clamp. It's our negative, and as I said in the last video, what's happening here is you've got your gas molecules, so things like nitrogen, oxygen in the air, becoming your gas molecules, but having lost an electron. The electron is then gonna go this way around the circuit so that you've then got your charged particle, so your, your gas molecule moving in this direction until it reaches the cathode and what you then get is your gas molecule regaining its electron to become your gas molecule. Um, but as it does this, as it moves its way across, what it will do is it will bump into lots of non-charged gas molecules and push them along with it. And what's then happening is this is what's really making up the bulk of your ionic wind. Okay, and all of that circuitry is wrapped up in here. So you've got your power pack going to the inverter. There's a switch just to switch that on and off, just a toggle switch. And then the output of the inverter, one of them is this hose clamp, hose clamp, and the other is this crocodile clip. Now, in the crocodile clip, I currently have a needle it may look like I've done something quite complicated here with all of this foam board. This is actually just to get everything at the right height. There is no clever electronics here. As I've already said, we've got our cells here wired directly to our high voltage um, inverter, just with an on and off switch. Then one of the wires from this goes to the hose clamp and the other one just goes up straight through the foam to the crocodile clip. The foam, as I've said, is just to hold everything at the right relative height and give me this nice big surface area that I can pop on a balance to allow me to measure the thrust being produced. 
But the beauty of this design is that this is where it really allows me to optimize and play around with these different parameters. For instance, I can move the point of the needle closer or further from the cathode from the hose clamp or I can make the hose clamp wider or smaller, so change the diameter of the cathode. I can even quite easily undo this screw and screw on a different size hose clamp. So on the whole, what we've got here is a really nice testing rig for varying these different parameters. So the diameter of the cathode, the distance between the anode and the cathode, and we can even, as some people suggested, change the material or the shape of the anode. So I had some people suggesting using sharp bits of copper because it would be a, a best conductor. It's an excellent suggestion, but for what I wanted, I wanted a nice sharp anode for now and this very variable setup. Now I took this into my lab earlier and I did some experiments weighing it while running it with different gaps between the cathode and the anode. Um, and I was quite surprised by the results because what I expected to see was that when you brought them very close together, that even though you've got a lot of ionic wind, most of it is going out to the side. So really, once you go past about kind of a 45 degree angle between the tip of the uh, anode and the edges of the cathode, I expected it to start, the force in this direction to start to drop away. And equally, as you go further that way, away from it, I expected, again, the force to drop away because you'll have a weaker electrical field here. What I actually found was quite different. I'm just going to quickly run some footage of me doing the experiment now. So as you may have seen there, the distance between the electrodes didn't actually have a huge effect on the force. So if we just look at the thrust produced in grams, when the needle was level with this side of the cathode, we were producing 0.07 grams of thrust. When we moved it kind of through this range here, between two millimeters and 10 millimeters from the cathode, we were producing 0 0.12, 0 0.13 grams of thrust and that kind of level fell off to 0.11 once we got out past a centimetre. Um, but on the whole, the distance between the electrodes didn't have nearly as much effect as I thought it would. Um, there are a number of reasons this could be. One is that, as again you may have seen in the video, the zero on my balance kept drifting. I also only did one repeat. It's not like this is huge with reliable data. I didn't have time to do loads of repeats. Um, and check for concordance. I was only measuring to two decimal places, which is as really, for this type of experiment, you probably want greater precision. However, I was a bit dubious about sticking this set up on a four decimal place balance, just because of the local uh, electric and magnetic field possibly screwing with a really very expensive balance. Um, and also, I did quite a small data range. Actually, I probably could have moved the needle through this full range to try and get some more data. Another issue that we're probably having here is that I'm assuming that the gas molecules which are losing the electron at the tip of the needle are regaining it at the edge of the hose clamp. Obviously there's quite a lot of surface area there, it could be that they are regaining that electron anywhere in here which could be really throwing off the results, so maybe what I should be doing instead is measuring from the centre here. Um, it is perhaps in that, idea, that sense not an ideal design with this being not a uniform surface, However, it is ideal for my purpose of varying the diameter of that cathode and the distance between the anode and the cathode. On the whole though, it was nice to see that I could actually vary that parameter and measure it because I've got a nice stable end on which I can stand the ion drive, allowing me to weigh it with it on and off. Now, one big improvement that I've made with this design, which might not actually look like an improvement, is that I just have this single anode and cathode, just one thruster. In my last design, 
I had an array of seven arranged kind of like a flower, but what really bugged me was that not every single one was producing a visible corona in the dark, and therefore not every single one was producing frost. So I've dialed the design right back to just having one. So let's switch this on, and hopefully we'll be able to see some thrust. So I've got some torn up tissue paper here, like I had in the last video. If I hold it there, not a whole lot happening. However, I turn it on, you hear it hissing, and you can see that really blowing the paper there. And I can also feel the breeze with my hand. Now, if you are going to try and repeat an experiment like this, what I would encourage you to do is between experiments, get something with a plastic handle, but a metal blade. I mean, this knife isn't ideal because there's quite a lot of mess involved and just short between those two contacts. I've had a couple of nasty shocks today where clearly there's been some charge difference between them. I've touched it and I've had a shock shoot straight up my arm. So if you are going to experiment with a sessile like this, please don't do that. Instead, ideally have something like a screwdriver at the ready with a plastic handle, metal shaft that you can short those contacts with between experiments. If ever you've worked with, say, a Wimshurst machine or a Van der Graaff generator, it's exactly the same principle as just discharging it between experiments. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn up the lights and we're going to see if we can see a visible corona. Now, the camera on my phone is not the best and it, it doesn't work that well in low light. So I remember last time it did struggle to pick up the visible corona on video, but I did manage to get a photo of it. So let's see if the same is true this time. So you can just about see that faint spot of corona there. Now, when I was playing around with this with a 9 volt battery, what I did actually find from the tip of the needle was a nice cone of corona. You could literally see the ionic wind. However, as I've already mentioned, that did burn out the transformer in here super fast. Who actually knows what this technology will end up being useful? If anything, maybe it will just be a useless, quirky, fun piece of technology. What I found this has actually been quite good for is, as a chemistry teacher, using it to explain time of flight mass spectrometry to my students quite a nice uh, visual and kinesthetic demonstration of that. There are lots of kind of pie in the sky ideas about what this technology could be used for, but as far as I'm concerned right now it's just quite a fun new technology that you can actually play around with at home so long as you are careful. And I would encourage anyone who is thinking of giving a project like this to go to be super careful, and if you're not good at being super careful please wear rubber gloves. Um, additionally, the batteries and the transformer are not designed to be used like this, so they do get quite hot. If you are going to do experiments like this, please, as I have been doing them here, do them in short bursts. So that's about it from me today with the new and improved Ionic Wind testing rig. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you have, please do like the video and please do subscribe. And if you've got any comments, suggestions, questions, anything that you want to tell me or that you want to know about Ionic Thrust and this design, please do pop them in the comment box. I really, really enjoyed chatting to you guys and getting some feedback, even though some of it was a bit critical, about the last iteration of this, and I really look forward to discussing more of this with you. Now, this isn't the normal kind of thing for this channel. Um, science and engineering is something I'm really passionate about, but not something I do that much on this channel. So if it's something you want to see more of in this channel, please do let me know, and I will do my best to cater to that. Right now, though, I've been Jamie, this has been Clear Amateurs, and I will see you next time.